Ladies and gentlemen, that is the wizened face of our once every three week guest, Will Durst. Hi, Will. Good morning, Alex Bennett. How are you doing? Yeah, well, the fact is, you're a political comedian. And, I am? Uh, yeah, and uh, every three weeks, things change enough that we have stuff we can talk about. <laughs> you know, uh, I love uh, something like MSNBC, who day by day uh, tries to find something to gin up. You know, it's always breaking news. It's always they always have that sign "breaking news" breaking up there. News. The graphic breaking news. Yeah. It broke. Can't they come up with another saying? One of those networks should say like "news that just happened" or something. I don't know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, you, they need a new phrase. You're right. You know, it, it's it's endemic of our society where we take terms and cheapen them, uh, like star, star. We cheapen star. You know. I wonder where the first uh, example of using star to call someone of fame. You know, it probably happened on stage. In, no, well, in my memory, uh, the the one that comes out to me was MGM, who used to have as their motto, more stars than there are in heaven. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, but, uh, but it, it doesn't that, don't we have a tendency to cheapen things by doing that? You know, over and over and over and over and over yeah, again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, or or the one I love, uh, I just I think is just terrific, is genius. You know, uh, oh, he's such a genius. Well, it, it, you know, I think how, what would Einstein think about that? You know, um, oh, I understood uh, what what rose to the level. You know, I mean, everybody has a. I'm sure the architectural. Uh, trade magazines have their own standard for genius, you know, and uh, you don't really have to be uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, you know. I imagine other people, oh, yeah. you know, uh, art world. I don't, has anybody ever referred to me as a genius? I don't think so. No, no, I don't think I ever got that appellation either. Yeah, but you will probably if you get old enough or dead, or dead, uh, or dead. Yeah. Oh, that genius comic, Will Durst. Yeah, who was it that said uh, the two things that always accrue in stature are politicians, hookers, and bad architecture? That they always <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, that's kind of an offshoot of that old saying that uh, um, the only things that get good reputations with age are politicians and hookers. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so anyway, so so uh, 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 this is the genius Will Durst. I uh, and this is the genius Alex Bennett. Yeah. The genius of, of uh, media. Yeah, media genius. Can you imagine, folks, just the um, uh, amazingness of the of the of the geniuses that are on your screen right now? Yes, the yeah. intellect here is overwhelming. But anyway, we we tend to cheapen terms. We tend to not give them the true respect they should have. Well, one is imitation. People hear something someone described as a genius, and they want to jump on the bandwagon. They want their own genius, or they want to jump on the genius. And two, it's a lack of imagination. And three, it's expedient, because people need to uh, denote something really big, really fast. You know, make sure that they got all their... And the responsibility is on them a lot of times, you know, forgetting this guy. Oh, he's a genius. You're going to love him. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, we, we cheapen terms in our society, and now we've cheapened the term president, so I, I don't see any reason why. <laughs> yeah, you I know. keep looking for that joke uh, that in America any anybody can become president, and now we saw how that worked out, or, <laughs> yeah. or, or Donald Trump proves it, or, you know, there's got to be, I know there's a joke there. There is a joke there. But you know why there isn't a joke there? This is really getting tiresome. Yeah. Scary, uh, off the wall. I mean, I just you know it's it's. I don't you know I've lived a long time. Uh, uh, fortunately, knock on wood. I'm just sitting around here every day wondering what's going to get me. Anyway, uh, and in all those years, 
I can only say there maybe was one other time that was as bad as this, and that was the McCarthy era. Ah. Yeah, when we had all those witch hunts going on and people being held, brought before congressional committees, they'd be asked if they were communists or not, and if they refused to testify, they didn't have a job the next day. You know, that was a pretty terrible time, and that was right after the war when we had that whole Red Scare and all of that. You know, obviously we don't have a Red Scare anymore. Our president calls one. You know, so uh, uh, it, 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 it that was maybe as bad a time that I can remember. But then hop to now, and hell, you know, I wish we had Nixon back. Uh, or Carter. <laughs> or Carter. You know, Carter wasn't a great president. He was a great human being. Great what? human being. Lousy president. I think, uh, I think James Comey said it best uh, that Donald... Donald Trump eats your soul a bit at a time. That's good. That's yeah. very good. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is amazing. It is just amazing. And it is amazing how he has so dominated the dialogue. You know? It's 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 not like the dialogue is, oh, uh, uh 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 what you know, with Obama, maybe you heard about Obama every couple of days maybe you know he just went and he did his work you know and if the work was good somebody reported and the president today blah 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 but the, trump dominates it every single day and these people over at msnbc at cnn uh, and uh, to a lesser extent fox because they're sucking his dick are just eating it all eating it up they be, they become the all Trump all the time networks. Yeah, they they have become state sponsored television, Fox News. Yeah, and uh, slowly, you know, but uh, the the pace has accelerated in the last two and a half years. I wonder if he, <clears throat> I wonder if he can keep this up. I wonder if there's a saturation point. I'm 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 exhausted. Yeah, fatigue. Yeah, I'm exhausted. Um. Uh, you know, so so now uh, here's here's the question I have for for the comic. Okay, first of all, I want to ask you, who you think so far of all the Democratic candidates is would be your choice for somebody A who could beat Trump? But that's maybe a different question than B who could uh, 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 be the best nominee as just a nominee. Yeah, yeah those are two different people. Yeah. yeah, I think Biden can beat Trump, and I think. Uh, uh, as she demonstrated when she uh, interviewed, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, the little lapdog, uh, the 194th breed of the American Kennel Club, William Barr, the other day. I thought yeah. Kamala <laughs> Harris. Great job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who? Klobuchar? Are you saying? Yeah. Kamala Harris. Oh, Kamala Harris. Yeah. I, I, get a, I, I get a problem with Klobuchar's voice. It's always as if. She's on the edge of not being sure of what she's saying in advance. And I got a problem with Klobuchar. I could not. Her voice could grate carrots. Yeah. So I, I, I cannot well, go. For, for, Plus she's smart and mean. Let me go back to another, make, make another first question instead of the one that I did, and then we'll get to the others. But of all the ones that are running, who are the ones that should just get out right now because they haven't got a fucking chance? Andrew Yang. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I remember his name. Yeah, who, uh, yeah. I don't think Hickenlooper has a chance. I don't think Michael Bennett has a chance. Um, two guys running from Colorado. Maybe we should put them in a Thunderdome and say, you only get one guy from Colorado. Um uh, I don't think uh, Eric Swalwell has a chance. Uh, These are names I haven't even heard. Uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, why? Uh, why? Mary Ann Williamson. I don't think she has a chance. Why are they in it then? Is I the don't question. know. I don't know. I was thinking that. I mean, I may that. as well. I just may as well put my hat in the ring. I mean, you know, it, 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 it. In fact, if you invited over all the candidates to my apartment. We it would fill it up for a party, you know. I, w- that, I wouldn't invite that many people for a party. Okay, I think it's twenty one right now. I think it, it's is it up to twenty one? Yeah. But I mean, I keep thinking, 
Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. Get out. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I, I think I don't think she's going to get the nomination. I don't think there's a chance in hell she's hey, going to get the nomination. Twenty out of twenty-one of those are not going to get the nomination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, I don't think she. I think she's wasting her time, her money. She could be better serving her constituency in Congress. Uh, oh. uh, Kamala Harris has a certain charisma that I would say she should keep going. Okay, uh, Klobuchar, I, you know, yeah. I'm I'm on the edge as to whether she should get out. Um, quite frankly, I think Beto O'Rourke should give up. I, yeah, I don't, he'd I, be a better served uh, to run for Senate in Texas again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yep. and how many? My question is, how many of these people are doing what they're doing as kind of an audition? You know, well that always happens for something happened, else. You know. That happened in the Republican nomina uh, uh, nomination process four years ago when when Scott Walker was at this time before the twenty uh, before the twenty sixteen Scott Walker was leading all the polls. So yeah, I mean you never know what's what's going on. It's it's uh, a lot of people are running as you say auditioning for vice president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I let me also add that uh, I think that the guy who surprises me, and he, you know, he was the flavor of the month for a couple of weeks. Booty gig. Booty gig. Yeah. yeah. Booty call, whatever his name is. Booty gig. Yeah, booty gig. Uh, booty judge. Booty gig. I'm thinking about that. He uh, has managed to not continue to be flavor of the month, he's considered to be a good flavor. You know? He seems to be yeah, a, Brown, he seems to be becoming chocolate Brown. or vanilla. What? <laughs> he's actually jumped into the, the top row, Baskin Robbins. Yeah. Uh, he uh Willie Brown, the former mayor of San Francisco, you remember him. Yeah, I remember Willie, of course. He said uh he was taken by uh uh booty gig and then he saw him a second and third time, and uh, he said the exact same thing and told the same stories, and it, the 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 petals kind of faded on the rose for him. Yeah, uh, but I think he's got he is a stealth candidate in a, in that he has he tick off all the little things Fox, on, yeah. the, on the chart and it's and being unwed, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, no, but I mean, like, for instance, two terms in Afghanistan. Yeah. All right. Where is it? Harvard? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, mayor, you know, he's been he's been a mayor of a town, so at least he knows administration, which is something, you know, Trump can't call him inexperienced, because if you want to talk about inexperienced, Trump is probably the most inexperienced president we've ever had. Um. I just think there's very little that Trump can throw on him. I mean, he can't use the gay card. He can't say, oh, you know, hey, Ferry Buttigieg, give him some kind of name or something like that. You know, he can't do that with Buttigieg. And he can't, uh, he, he can't assail oh, him. Loafers, and, if you know what I mean. I mean, well, what can he assail him on? Uh, Buttigieg today uh, came out with a statement that uh, uh, America was never as great as advertised. Which I kind of like, wow. you know, because I think it's true. I think we're very egotistical about America is great. Have you ever been anywhere else? A France is kind of nice, you know? Yeah. 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 Uh, England, uh, they have some good medical care there. The, uh, go up to uh, Norway and Sweden. Those are perfectly idyllic countries. So to say that we're the best, you know, uh, America's the best is... Um, I think he's right. I think it's not as good as it was advertised. We had slavery, you know. We had the Red Scare. Uh, we could go through, a, tick off a whole bunch of, of things that show that it wasn't as great as we advertised it. We had Nixon? Yeah. So that's the one thing I guess that Trump would go after. Yeah. But he couldn't go after his gayness. That would be unseemly. Well, we're talking about Trump. I th I think he'll do a, a dog whistle. There'll there'll be some sort of you know offhand remark where he's 
you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink to all of his uh, his base and cores. Yeah. Um, I just don't know if he'll last well. You know, whereas Biden, you know, he's 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 uh, Biden a long fight, and uh, the unions love him, and you know, all the East Coast and West Coast people, uh, all the elites, they it's different that because uh, in in the Republican Revolution, yeah. it was the base. That, that rebelled against uh, the business guys and the religious guys. It was the base that said, no, we want change. And, and here, it's the elites for the Democrats. It's the elites. You know, yeah. it's all the the blue, the, the heavy blues, the New Yorks and the Californias. And, and they're the ones who want, oh, we don't want the status quo. We want, whereas the, the Midwestern uh, co- core of Democrats... Uh, the blue collar guys, yeah. the Democrats, they want Biden because they trust him, and and they've seen that he's always worked with labor, and that he, they think that maybe he can work with the other side. They don't want the revolution. It's the elites who yeah. want the revolution. The AOCs, you know, who, who demand change right now, and and let's ban cars, and and everybody gets a pony, and you know, it's it's the the, the middle class that. Kind of just tamp all that down, you know. Well, so I think I think it's be an interesting fight. The exact opposite of the Republicans. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, but you know, I mean, I think in terms of, I mean, yes, I think he could give Trump a good fight. Okay. Beto. Yeah. Beto. Uh, huh. Beto. No. Or uh, Biden. 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 Biden, Beto, Bernie, uh, or Buddha Gagig, Buddha Gagig, Buddha Gagig, Gagig, Bobo. Biden, Beto, Buddha Gagig, or Buddha Gagig. Yeah, <laughs> I think probably part of the problem you see this perception here, and I argued this with my ex-wife Ronnie a couple of weeks ago that I I I I don't think when we talk about electability, we have to talk about. Abil- you know, ability, uh, history, whatever. Trump threw that out the window. There's right. a, a, an electability factor that has to do with charisma, okay, and that has to do with perception. Uh, the thing I like about Buttigieg, I think he looks young. He looks like he's ready to take on the day. You know, he looks like he could get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and work until 3 o'clock in the morning, you know. And, and Biden looks like he barely got out of bed. That's the problem with Biden. I think Biden looks tired. And do we need to, you know, and uh, this is ageist, but I'm 79. So going you on, get to be ageist. So I can be ageist. Yeah. He looks too old for the job. You know? Well, he's what, 74? No, he's, he, I think he's going to be, if he were elected president, he'll be something like, what, 78 maybe? I'm yeah, yeah. wrong. And Bernie is 77? Bernie is like, you know, he's in the dinosaur wing of the Natural Museum. You know, I mean... I mean good news from his paleontologist, I mean, w- though. <laughs> what we, we have all these people, and what we come down to are the two old farts. And haven't yeah. we had enough old farts in politics for years? I think the perfect nexus of age and whatever was Obama. He was at the right age. That's the right age. He had the energy. He could, you know, it's a rough, demanding job, and and I think he did pretty well. Uh, he was the second youngest president. Yeah, and and I think that was the for this century. Okay, that's the perfect age. Maybe in in centuries past, you could have a big fat president like Taft or you know Coolidge or whoever, you know, who looked like he was had one foot in the grave. But that was then, and this is now. This is the day of television and social media and all those things. And what face do you want there? And I think young... Any face other than Trump's. We, well, of I'll course. I'll tell you. But, any face other than... I'll, I'll vote for a child's beach pail full of sand if it's got a chance against Trump. Well, anything. 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 But the, the question is, uh, uh, are these... People, I mean, like, I, I like Bernie because he's a socialist, and so am I, okay? Uh, uh, I wish you were a Democrat. 
I, 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 yeah, I like Biden because he's got a history, you know, of, of uh, you know, he's got a bad history, too. He's got that whole, uh, you know, what do you call it, hearings uh, for, you know, yeah. Uh, he's got, but the reason he's got a lot of baggage is he's been around so long, he built up baggage. Right. Whereas uh, Mayor Pete has no baggage because he hasn't had time to, you know, what's his baggage? He got a C in math in high school or something. I don't know. That would be his baggage. So as you get older, as presidents get older, um, uh, as candidates get older, they get more baggage. They get more baggage. Yeah. Yeah, um, Biden's got more baggage than the first United flight out of O'Hare after a freak spring blizzard. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a lot of baggage. Uh, uh, what's his name? Trump didn't have a lot of baggage because we didn't know a lot about him. His businesses dealings were secretive. You know all of that. So it wasn't like he had a record of voting for this and then voting for that. You know, I think well, you know he was for the war before he was against it. Yeah. yeah, and I think his bad time was taking out a full page ad against what the Central Park Seven or whatever that was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there were things there, but they, it, it, it's not like a politician who goes in every day and votes on stuff. Right. So you can nail them down on position. So he has, you know, a paper trail, as it were. Uh, now it comes the big question because you're the, you know, this is your business. Which of all the Democratic candidates would be the best for comedy? Ah, uh, oh, Democrats are so boring for comedy because you know everything is, uh, is shaded and you know there's gradations. You know who you know who said that before you, Mort Saul years ago. Oh, when, really? When Kennedy got elected, he said, "My career is over." Ah. Uh. <laughs> You know, when he was making fun of the Republicans, they're easy to make fun of. Yeah. Democrats are a lot harder to make fun of. I had that problem with uh, during Obama. Really? It was hard to turn the Titanic, you know? Yeah. I had eight years of Bush and, and Cheney. Yeah. And, and that was wonderful. Okay, Man. so w which of these guys is the best for comedy? I don't know. I mean, you got 21 to pick from. I know. Well, it, it's not going to be Marianne Williamson. Uh, I, uh, I don't know who would possibly, you know, comics, we get to know so much about these people, not mm -hmm. just through the candidacy, but when they become president, they're omnip, um, I'm, I'm the present, you know, they're everywhere and you get to, I mean, after after Nixon, everybody in America could do a Nixon impression. You know, oh, well, I am not a crook. You know, everybody in America heard that voice. Same with Reagan. Yeah. Reagan, people could do, anybody on the street could do a, well, and I see people doing Trump now. Much better Trump than I can do. You know, <laughs> and that was George W. Bush. He just <laughs> so we get to know so much about these people. Well, here's, that, here's the thing. And I, I, I asked Harry Shearer this about doing impressions once. And he, oh, no, no, not Harry Shearer. Uh, the guy who did Ren, Ren and Stimpy. Um, um, uh, Bill, uh, Billy. Uh, Billy West. I asked Billy West about this because he was doing, he was doing uh, one of the Three Stooges as a young man, and then he was doing him as an old man. He says the harder impression to do is him as a young man. When you get to be an old man, you start getting, a, you become a caricature. Your voice starts becoming a caricature. And it's you can do an older so-and-so, but you can, it's harder to do a younger so-and-so. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, uh, uh, the guy on the Second City, uh, Dave Thomas, used to do Bob Hope. And he had an old Bob Hope, and he had a new Bob, a young Bob Hope. And he could do both of them, okay? But he it, the... Easiest one to do, according to Billy West, was the older version of anybody. So I imagine Biden would be easier to do an impression of, although I don't know how I would do it uh, at this point. Uh, better You could better do an impression of him today than you could do of Biden when he was younger. And so well, Buttigieg, they can't even do an impression of. Do an impression of Buttigieg. Hi, I'm Pete Buttigieg. You yeah. know <laughs> 
here's my husband. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Hillary was uh, tough. You could never get, uh, at least I could never get her voice, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you're not a female. Uh, I But I never heard a woman actually do her very well, although there was a woman on Saturday Night Live who who did yeah, an Dave essence. Yeah, McKinnon did her. She, but she did stuff. the essence. She didn't really do the voice, you know? Why well, they were called impressions. Yeah, that's why they're called impressions. Yeah. But anyway, so so, I mean, it really is... Uh, so there's nobody right now you would say that, that stands out as being That's, really good for comedy. Not yet, no. We haven't get you know, the first debate mm -hmm. is in June, and or debates, because they're going to need two nights, I think. I think they're going to go for two nights. Yeah. Have 10 on one night and 11 on the other night. Isn't it getting to be old, though? I mean, that we're doing this so early. You know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't, it shouldn't start till, till January, you know? Yeah. It's on about the same path as the Republicans had in uh, 2016. You know, a couple of debates and then the pace quickens. Well, it's just that all the news outfits feel that it gives them news. So they push this thing earlier than it should be. I mean, and then we got to go, I guess, because we're, run, we're, run, we're running over our normal allotted time. There's no allotted time. This is the Internet. Um that um, um, we, it, it, my idea has always been we do away with the primaries because all they do is cost the states money. If you want a primary, then you as a party should pay for them, you know, because you're trying to establish who your nominee is going to be, right? Instead, yeah. instead, everybody should say, I'm going to run for president. And they all go to the convention and they, they play games at the convention and somebody comes out the winner. Now here's our standard bearer. They're going to run. You could do that. When the conventions happen, so you don't need all the primaries, all right. Save a lot of money. Save. So how do you, how do you vet all those twenty one people want to give a speech at the convention? Then hey, it's their problem. It's the Democrats and who they're going to put up as their nominee, and they should not have to deal with it. We shouldn't have to pay millions and millions of dollars here in New York to hold primaries that only benefit their outcome. Okay. So we do away with the primaries, and there was a time we didn't have primaries in this country, okay? So it's not unusual. Secondly, we don't start until those conventions, which is what? July, August, whatever. And then you have like about a three-month time in which people run for president, and then it's over and done with. We don't spend two years going through this and billions and billions of dollars, you're putting thousands of people out of work. What about the people with the bumper stickers? <laughs> the bumper sticker companies. Yeah. So. What about all those people? What about all the people at at the you know the poll workers? They get paid for going out and and having people wander into their garage. Mm -hmm. You know, you're you're anti job is what you are. Uh, uh, in true true Alex Bennett style, I say, fuck them. <laughs> anyway, nice talking to you once again, Will. This hey, has been you have a, a great week, Alex Bennett. I'll talk to you in a couple. This was a good one. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Will Durst. <laughs>